Halloween is almost here, which means it's time for scary movies, spooky costumes, trick-or-treating, and hysterical Christian moralizing. With that last one in mind, here are five sinful things about hell houses. Number one, they're dishonestly marketed. If you've never heard of a hell house, the concept is easy enough to explain. Just imagine a haunted house and then get rid of anything that could possibly be the least bit fun and replace it with a series of poorly written and produced tableaus meant to illustrate the perils of a non-Christian life. Sound like a good way to spend a Friday night? The first hell houses were created in the 1970s, but they really started to gain popularity in the 90s when an evangelical Christian pastor from Colorado named Keenan Roberts began selling hell house kits to churches around the country though they are typically arranged and presented from an unmistakably fundamentalist Christian point of view, with visitors guided through seven separate rooms, each one dedicated to showcasing the horrible consequences of a different deadly sin, hell houses are often outwardly marketed as conventional secular haunted houses. I guess thou shalt not bear false witness doesn't apply when you're pulling a bait and switch to lure in the unsaved marks. I wonder how many churches sponsoring hell houses also operate crisis pregnancy centers. I'd be willing to bet the overlap is not insignificant. Number two, they promote faith through fear. The primary mission of a hell house is to persuade the unsuspecting sinners who pass through it to give their lives to Christ in order to first avoid dying a horrible, gruesome death as a direct result of their sinful lifestyle, and second, escape everlasting damnation in the unquenchable fires of hell. So, as you might suspect, they tend to lean pretty heavily on fear. Perhaps somewhere, Jonathan Edwards is looking down on this nation dotted with hundreds of hell houses and snapping his fingers as he ruefully exclaims, Why didn't I think of that? All I did was hiss threateningly at people about how much God abhors them and could drop them into hell at any moment. But if I'd thought to harness the power of crude amateur theater, oh, I could really have made a difference. In their zeal to present non-Christian ways of life in as frightening a manner as possible, hell houses can often go over the top. In fact, you might even go so far as to say, number three, they're lurid and alarmist. Which would be fine, and at least good for a laugh, if they didn't attempt to deal with some very serious subjects. Hell houses frequently feature scenes depicting drug addiction or suicide or school shootings, these depictions are often not only vulgar and tasteless, but offensively reductive. Why is this young man hopelessly addicted to heroin? Why did this girl cut her wrists? Because they chose to live for themselves and to seek fulfillment in the world rather than turning to God. Another favorite subject is abortion, which is, of course, presented as baby murder, usually at the hands of a gleefully evil doctor who performs late-term abortions with a smile on his lips and a song in his heart. Oh, and the pregnant woman usually dies too, because she has it coming! Praise the Lord! Number four, they push ignorance and bigotry. Would it surprise you to learn that many hell houses are blatantly, viciously homophobic? Well, they are. I mean, I guess it's okay if that does surprise you, but it really shouldn't. I mean, I, I think that's a fair expectation. Being gay is a choice, according to a typical hell house, and it's a choice no one should ever make, because not only does God consider being gay to be an abomination, it also guarantees you'll die of AIDS. Misunderstanding how human sexuality works and spreading hateful anti-gay stereotypes all at once. Neat trick. Hell houses often give similar treatment to followers of non-Christian religions, especially Wiccans, who are shown to be devil worshippers who practice human sacrifice. So hell houses are deceptive, they're fear-based, they're alarmist and trashy and shamelessly bigoted. I mean, who wants to spend Halloween being theatrically shamed for being pro-choice by a bunch of young Republicans? But just in case you need one more reason not to go to one, number five, they're fundraisers for religious extremists. While there are a few hell houses that are free to attend, most of them charge admission. And why wouldn't they? The most popular hell houses can easily attract thousands of visitors every year, 
One of the largest hell houses in the country, Scare Mare, which is put on by Liberty University, charges 10 bucks a head and boasts that it has been seen by 26,000 people since it first opened 20 years ago. And those hell house kits sold by Pastor Roberts I mentioned back at the beginning, they went for 299 bucks a pop. Not a bad racket. So if you want to help fund a right-wing fundamentalist church that opposes civil rights for LGBTQ people, wants to rob women of their bodily autonomy, views followers of non-Christian religions as bloodthirsty, baby-sacrificing satanic cultists, and has a congregation that probably consists almost entirely of proud Trump voters, go ahead and plunk down your cash for a ticket to your nearest hell house. And if you don't want to support any of those things, maybe just go to a regular haunted house. Or stay home and rent a movie. Curse of Frankenstein is good. Gothic horror starring Peter Cushing and Christopher Lee? Can't beat that. <sighs> the hardest part is picking only five. Catch you next time. Hey folks, hope you got something out of this one. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. And also please consider helping me to make more videos like this one by supporting this channel through Patreon. You can go to patreon.com slash steveshives to become a patron. Thanks for watching.